Hey hey, today we are going to create a low battery list. This list will only show you those batteries that have a low charging value. I think it doesn't really make sense to show all the batteries in your system with their charging values. Basically, you only want to know which batteries you have to replace. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a list of batteries that need to be replaced using custom sensor templates. Hey, a couple of weeks ago I published a video about how you can set up custom sensors using templates in Home Assistant. This video is going to make use of the knowledge in that video, so I would recommend that you first watch the other video if you don't have any knowledge about how to set up custom sensors and templates, because then this video will make much more sense to you. You can still follow this video without watching that other one, but I think it will really help if you first watch the other video. Anyways, it's up to you what to do. Let me show you first what the end result will be of this video. So first let me show you what the end result will be of this video. For that I created a tutorial dashboard and what you see here is a battery threshold helper that I created. I didn't create this helper only for the sake of this video, but it's generally a good idea to create helpers to store your variables in it. So what I did here is creating a battery threshold of 10% and what you see now is you don't see a list of batteries. That is because I do not have any batteries in my system that have a lower charge value than 10%. But let's put this to 70% then you see that a list appears that shows me all the batteries that have a value lower than 70%. And that's really handy. So this list is something that you can put on your own dashboard or maybe send to your phone as soon as a battery gets a lower value than the threshold. I created a custom sensor to make this possible, but there were some caveats that I came across. And this guy over here helped me a lot in making it perfect. So also credits to him. Now, let's set this up. So, in the tutorials dashboard that I already created, you see that I created a helper here. And I'm going to show you how you can create a helper yourself. For that, we are going to settings, and then we are going to devices and services, and there's this option helpers here. And you can create a new helper by clicking on add helper, and then in our case, select for number and then give this helper a name. Let's say test helper. I already created that helper, so I'm going to show you that one. But you can create your own helper here and give it the name that you want. So I'm going to back, cancel, and I'm going to search for threshold. That is the helper that I created. So this helper has the name battery threshold. The minimum value is zero, the maximum value is 100, and the step size is one, which is good enough for me. You can also click over here and then change the value of your helper to another value and then close it and it will get the other value. If a device contains a battery and Home Assistant supports it, you can retrieve the state of that battery and also the values of the battery attributes in Home Assistant. You can view that in the developer tools. So for that, go to developer tools, go to states, then click on set state. And for instance, I'm going to do this for my kitchen motion sensor battery. And what you see here is the state. So the state is the percentage, it's 47%. You see that the state class, which is an attribute, is measurement, and device class is battery. And also the friendly name is kitchen motion sensor battery. We are going to use this state and the state attributes to create a custom sensor using templates. And for that, I have to show you how templates work a little bit. So if you want to create custom sensors using templates in Home Assistant, you have to edit some YAML files. You have to add something to your configuration.yaml and you have to create a template.yaml file. 
If you're not able to edit YAML files in Home Assistant yet, you can install an add-on to do that. For that, go to Settings, go to Add-ons, and then you can go to the add-on store. And in the add-on store, you can search either for the file editor and install the file editor, or you can search for the Visual Studio Code Server and install that one. So either install file editor or Visual Code Server, and then you can go on. I use Studio Code Server, so let's open that. And what you see in Studio Code Server is basically a list of all the files that are on your Home Assistant server. And we are going to edit the configuration.yaml first, so let's open that. And if you scroll down a little bit, you see I have a section here that I created YAML file locations. And what you have to add is this sentence, include templates.yaml. What it basically does is that it points to another file which is called templates.yaml, and that file contains the code of your custom sensor. So make sure that you also create a file which is called templates.yaml. And that file, I already created it here, but you can also do it by clicking on this icon here and then create a file which is called templates.yaml. Now let's open templates.yaml. And I already added the code here to show my list of low battery devices. So what do you see here? In templates.yaml, you always start with one line and that is called the sensor line. And within this line, you are going to create all your sensor templates. So this sensor template has a name and it's called low battery devices. It has an icon, which is MDI battery low, and it has a state. And that state contains the code that is needed to show my list of low battery devices. This might look intimidating and I can totally understand that. If that is the case, then please watch my custom sensors and templates video first because that will give you a pretty good idea about how that works. The link is in the description below. So what is this state doing? It is first setting a threshold and the threshold is the value of the helper that I created, the input number battery threshold helper. So the value of that helper will be stored in that variable, which is called threshold. Then I'm going to create a namespace and that namespace will basically contain the result of the query that I will do on my home assistant, let's say database that returns all the batteries that have a low value. Then there's a for statement and that for statement is retrieving the actual values. So for every entity, it first checks if device class is defined and state class is defined. Just as how we saw this in the developer tools on the state and state attributes of the battery entity. Then it's going to filter the entities based on device class. So the device class should be battery and the state class should be measurement. And it will filter all the batteries that have a number in their state. So batteries that are unavailable will not be taken into account here. So then it is going to be a little bit tricky because now it's going to say if the state is lower than the threshold, then add the name of this battery to the list of batteries that have low value and replace the string battery or battery with a capital B with an um, empty string, basically. So you don't have the name battery in that list too for each entity. And then the end for is saying, okay, now you can go to the next entity and see if that entity can be added to our namespace. And then there's code that is needed to sort the list based on the attribute value. So I will create a new namespace bat, which will contain all the sensors that I retrieved before, and I'm going to sort them on the attribute state. And in the next code lines, we are going to fill the namespace bat with all the battery lines, which have a low charging value. And we're going to add a percentage to each line there. And in the last lines of code, we are going to print these lines to an output. 
And what we are doing there is saying we are going to output ns.bat and we are going to truncate it to 255 characters. And that is needed because an entity state cannot be longer than 255 characters, otherwise we will get errors. So basically with this truncate option we are checking if it's longer than 255 characters, then replace the last three characters of those 255 characters with three dots. And if that list is empty, so basically if there are no batteries found which have a lower value, lower charging value than the threshold, then return unavailable to the screen. And we can use that later on if we want to show it. Now, that's a lot of information, but you can download this code from my GitHub page and the link is in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it. But I still wanted to explain what actually is happening here so you get a little bit of an idea. Okay, how can I build this myself in different scenarios that may be applicable to you? After you added new code to the templates.yaml, you have to reload the templates.yaml in Home Assistant. And for that, you can go to the developer tools, then go to YAML, scroll down here, and there is this option template entities. And then you click on this and now it is reloaded. Let's check if it works. So we are going to states and in states we're going to set state and I'm going to search for my low battery devices sensor which is now there and if I click it I won't see anything. I see unavailable which is correct because the value of the helper is 10%. So let's change the value of that helper. Well, let's do that by going to settings, devices and services, go to helpers, search for threshold. And here's my battery threshold. Open it. I'm going to click here and I'm going to say let's make it 70%. Now I'm going back to my developer tools and I'm going to refresh here and now you see that I get a list back with batteries that have a value that is lower than 70%. So that's really cool. That works. Now we are going to add this to our dashboard. Now let's add our low battery list to a dashboard. I will add it to my tutorial dashboard, but you can add it to any dashboard that you like, of course. Now, let's go to tutorials. Now I'm going to edit this dashboard and I'm going to create a new one. So that is, let's say, low battery list tutorial. To save it. Now we're going to add a couple of cards to this dashboard. I am also going to add a card to change the value of the helper, but you really don't need that because normally you would set that once and do nothing with it anymore. But it's now for the sake of this tutorial that I can show you how it really works. So I'm going to add that card first. I'm going to add an entities card. I'm going to remove these entities and I'm going to select the battery threshold entity here and to save it and now I already have my battery threshold helper entity on my dashboard so that I can change the value for the sake of this demonstration. Now we are going to add another card and what we actually want is that we don't want to show this card if the value of our custom sensor of the low battery list is unavailable because otherwise it shows an empty card there and you don't want that. You don't want to show anything at that moment. And for that we are going to add another card and that card is called the conditional card. Click on the conditional card and we are going to check on an entity which is our low battery devices entity and we're going to say if the state is not equal to unavailable, then show something. 
And what we want to show there is a card. So I'm clicking on card here. And the card that I'm going to show is maybe a card that you never used before. And that is the Markdown card. And what you can do with a Markdown card is that you can show any type of text here. And you can also do some formatting in it. It's a really powerful card that not many people use, I think. So we are going to say, let's give it a title, Low Batteries. And we are going to remove this content here. And we are going to replace it with a little bit of code. And that is the code that will retrieve the state of our low battery devices list. I will paste the code here. This code is also on my GitHub page and the link is in the description below. So you can copy it there. So basically what it should show is the value that is in my custom sensor. So this is the same value as I showed in the developer tools state part. Now there is a caveat here because if you go back to conditions, you will see that it turned back to state is equal to. So I'm going to set this to state is not equal to again. And now I'm going to save this card. And it's really important because if it stays on state is equal to, it won't work. So now you save it. And now you see low batteries unavailable. And now it looks like it's not working because it is showing this card. But that is because you are in edit mode. Because if you were not in edit mode, it wasn't possible for you to click on this edit link here. So let's close the edit mode by clicking on done. And now you see that no card is shown here. So it's empty. And now we're going to change this. Let's say we're going to change it back in 70. Enter. And now you see that the list is there. So I think this is a very useful example on how you can create custom sensors yourself. And you don't have to show all the batteries anymore in your dashboard. It won't clog up your dashboards and you only get a message as soon as a battery has a low value. Oh, and I wanted to show you one more thing. If you want to change the settings of your entity and you go to settings devices and services, go to entities, and there you filter on your new custom sensor, in my case, low battery devices, you see that you cannot alter any of the settings of this new custom sensor. And that is because this custom sensor doesn't have a unique ID yet. And I'm going to show you how you can fix this. So again, we go to Studio Code Server. And then we go to our template file. And now we are going to add one more line here. And that line is called unique ID. And now I have to add a unique ID. And for that, there is a website. We go to that website first. That is this website, uuidgenerator.net. The link is in the description below. And you can create a unique idea here. So let's say I only need one. I'm going to generate it. I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going back to Studio Code Server. I'm going to paste that unique ID here. Now I'm going to save the templates.yaml. I'm going back to Developer Tools. I'm going to YAML. Scroll down. And I'm going to click on template entity. So reload this entity. And now let's see if we can change the settings. So now we go to settings. We go to devices and services. Entities. I'm going to filter on my low battery devices entity again. And now you see that I can change the settings. So I can assign an area and I also can give it a friendly name if I like. So that's how you do that. I hope this video helped you. If so, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, tick the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.